I love the like I'm a singer, I'm a dancer, I'm an actor. So the idea of like a Bollywood movie for me would be so much fun. Uh, I would like to just put that out there. <laughs> All the filmmakers. If anyone needs an American singer dancer to come and do a Bollywood movie, I'm I would like to put my hand up and my hat in the ring. Um, I would so love to do that. India is so beautiful, and just all of the connection to nature and um, and uh, yeah, I mean, of course, and also, uh, you know, you, you have the most beautiful like raw diamonds. <laughs> I love those gray raw diamonds, the bangles. Oh, like flipping out over those. I need to come to India literally just to shop for bangles. <laughs> Jacqueline is a is a happy person, you know, at her core and therefore she can exude that happiness. So yeah, of course she could have gone that way and then that would have been more like a Devil Wears Prada kind of situation. But uh, but that was the very the very thing I wanted to avoid. And my daughter's like, your friends will start asking, will start telling you about, about sex and they don't know. <laughs> they don't know anything. And I said, but I do. <laughs> and if I don't know, if I don't have the answer to your specific question, I can guarantee you I know somebody who does. Aisha loves to wear wardrobe, Will not does not like to wear wardrobe where she has to wear a bra. <laughs> she, she likes to wear wardrobe where she can be braless. Yes. <laughs> and I don't think she might be telling you that. Katie comes to work every single day in uh, these, uh, these wonderful, very colorful, tie-dyed sweat, sweat outfits that are uh, sweat tops and sweat bottoms that uh, come from a friend of a friend of hers, a company that a friend of hers has in Nashville, Tennessee. Because we wear such high heels on the show, as soon as we can move into a close-up, we put on our Crocs. We're, they're like high-heeled Crocs, <laughs> and, and Megan is in her Crocs most of the time because she has uh, feet feet issues that like her feet are always hurting. So uh, I can relate to that because my feet are always hurting. So uh, so that it's it's funny though that we're always like uh, this incredible yellow dr dress. It just looked like a burst of sunshine. It's I think it was a Calvin Klein uh, dress that almost had like a side cape to it. It was very bright, sunshiny yellow. I, I just loved that one. I find Ian the most attractive. <laughs>
And I just felt it was important to see a representation of that and also to give the younger generation um, an example of what real leadership looks like, what real mentorship looks like. And that that way, when they see something that is not right, they'll have some touchstone to be able to go, that doesn't feel and look right to me. And, and um, so I'm going to speak up about it and I'm going to change that or I'm going to go to a superior and, and I'm going to call that out. You know, with your character, Jacqueline, uh, you prove that women are more adept than men because she keeps, you know, open lines of communication with employees. She is forgiving, she understands her colleagues' struggles and hence the source of inspiration and innovation. But don't you think she could have been slightly monstrous? Yeah, for sure she could have been. I mean, that, that's, that's the way that, you know, that was the thing that, that was so important to me when we, when creators, a uh, creator about it, Sarah Watson, was just sort of, what do I, you know, what is it about this character? Like, I, she had to remain human. She had, that, that, that human is imperfect, of course, and that doesn't mean she's not going to stumble, but, but I think that, I think people who are really mean are, are, um, you know they're 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 mean inside to themselves they're they're all of that is pointed in inwardly tenfold and i think that um i think that you know jacqueline is a is a happy person you know at her core and therefore she can exude that happiness so yeah of course she could have gone that way and then that would have been more like a devil wears prada kind of situation but uh but that was the very the very thing i wanted to avoid avoid oh, yes in fact you know the opening scene i so remember it i remember it so clearly i mean the moment i saw you i was like oh my god is she i mean will she be like another miranda Priestley? but no the next scene you know you 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 sort of you know made it so clear that this character is in stark contrast you know, to what we saw in The Devil in Prada. And yeah. that, I think, you know, that has sort of you know, struck a chord with a lot of people. And that's why, you know, we all need a Jacqueline in our lives. Yes, yes, we do, we do. You know, you know, the show is so feminine, but shockingly, a lot of men don't even understand, you know, what their role is in feminism. For men, feminism can provide the inspiration for shifting towards, you know, being more cooperative and equal relationships. But shockingly, a lot of men don't even understand, uh, you know, this. So what do you have to say to them? <laughs> um, I think that, uh, I think men uh, need to work on um, making space, you know, making space, making room for things that they don't understand, mm -hmm. being able to, to sort of hold the um, option of being uh, of being out of the out of the loop because I think that uh, I think women's experience is different than men's experience and <clears throat> I think it would be presumptuous to um, to think that they get it when they don't <laughs> and I think it's good to just it's good to just be in the position of well tell me more. I think that that would be a great position for men. You know, I this is something that I feel I understand, but I would love to hear it from your perspective. Um, tell me more about your experience. I think that's really to be more receptive, to be more of receptors and available to feedback from their female counterparts would be would be a wonderful step in the right direction for 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 males in in, in the feminist. Uh, you know. And I don't even call it the feminist movement because I think it's more like a feminine revolution in the sense that we are maintaining all of our femininity now. If you look back at the 60s, women were sort of almost trying to be more like men. And I think now women are trying to be women and they're trying to let, to, they're keeping all of their fe their feminine guiles. You know, we still, and that's one of the great things about the bold type is that you really do get to enjoy what it is to be a woman. The beautiful, the beautiful looks, the clothes are fun, the beautiful, the makeup, the hair, the, the beautiful environments and the romance. And, um, and I think that is something that excites us and, and the show is wonderfully idealistic and realistic together. And that's, that's what makes it such a fun show to watch. In fact, what's really interesting is that even, you know, you as Jacqueline, you know, Jacqueline never feels the need, you know, of modeling the behavior of her male peers, you know, to lead successfully at work. I mean, she, she leads successfully because she is being herself. 
so That's you have right. so many with so many lessons you know coming from so you have two beautiful daughters yes. what sort of uh, you know what have they sort of derived from the show what lessons have you been imparting to them when it comes to you know sexual well being when it comes to women's uh, health when it comes to you know issues like uh, you know vagina health ke or masturbation or you know i mean these are the issues that a lot of mothers don't even discuss with their doctors So, yes. Yeah, I think that's very very important and I think that um you know I had a mother that was incredibly able to talk to me about sex and 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 self-pleasuring and being able to you know so that you know you have to learn how to pleasure yourself so you can pleasure someone else um or or so that someone else can pleasure you you can help you know point them in the right direction. So I've had those conversations with my daughters. I've had those conversations with them about um um about all of those things and and I think that mostly just opening that line of communication and I think it really is important that women share those things with other women and a lot of people get it from their friends well that's great except that um except that when you're starting having those conversations at 13 12 whenever 13 14 whenever it is You know, I I said to my daughters like your friends will start asking, will start telling you about about sex and they don't know. <laughs> they don't know anything. And I said, "But I do." <laughs> and if I don't know, if I don't have the answer to your specific question, I can guarantee you I know somebody who does, <laughs> you know, who has had that experience. So I just um I just wanted them to really know that I would never judge them and that that I'm available for any questions and that it's part of our humanity it's part of being a human that we that we have sexual desires that we have to we have to concentrate on all of our health whether it's sexual health and you know spiritual health and mental health and all those things are are part of what it is to be a human being so it's very important So you are so open do they feel ever uncomfortable oh my god you know a mother is like so open about these issues do they feel uncomfortable with your openness i i mean i think that i think that sure i think there's times you know when they'll yeah. just be like oh mom you know and i and i try to say you know uh i try to give them space for that but i also try to say it's fine for you to want to just not talk about it but also you need to know that i'm here and that that it's available to you and that I probably have some insights into things that you're you're curious about you know now you know one question that came from the viewers is that you know you are a perfect boss i mean we need a boss like you but your subordinates jane sutton and cat they aren't working all the time they seem to be having fun they are not <laughs> work they're not filing uh, you know as many stories as we do as journalists i mean Their lives seem to be just so glossy, happy, and not, you know, as confused and serious as it as it is, you know, for many of us. <laughs> What are they doing right. now? Well, yeah. I mean, it's a TV show, guys. <laughs> you know, I think that I think we have to have that balance, and I think that that's, you know, if you watch if you watch all seasons, you do see different characters have different struggles at different times. and we we really did try to and some of those struggles are very very serious struggles um so the so which are these struggles that that you find very serious what are the struggles yes yes, yes. well i i'm i i guess i'm allowed to give it all away right because it's streaming people can they can binge it well i mean just jane you know jane uh you know has has uh the the gene for for breast cancer you know that's in her dna and she decides to make very very drastic choices to to deal with that um there is obviously romantic issues you know cat is is sort of trying to figure out her sexuality and who she is in the world and how that balances out her you know the things that she's that she's trying to um do professionally um and then there's you know Sutton is obviously you know navigating trying to find her way up climb her way up the ladder to become to make her dreams come true whilst also balancing a relationship with with an older man who wants different things than she wants so there's lots of struggles there you know lots of struggles there within 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 all the fun and the fashion <laughs> so who do you find more attractive is it Richard or is it Ben Strike Oh, uh you mean of the two girls yes. 
I find Ian the most attractive. <laughs> of course. But um, but I think I think uh, you know they're both gorgeous men and they're both wonderful on the show. I love the, I love the, both of those characters so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I mean I think everybody fell in love with with the pinstripe, but everyone fell in love with the Sutton Richard relationship too, and the pinstripe Jane relationship. So I think they're both pretty pretty charged. <laughs> Mirora, you've shown one needn't be the ruthless and cynical uh, Verona Priestley to get work done. So we pick the myths about women and work and want you to bust them your way. So should we begin? Sure. <laughs> All right. Women don't aspire to senior leadership roles. They're just not interested. Yeah, well, that's complete BS. Um, yeah, women absolutely want that and should have that and are absolutely capable of being probably better bosses than most men because they work harder and they work more focused. They work better and actually they are just statistically better multitaskers. Child rearing stops women from making it to the top. Yep, absolutely not true. Um, I think that women are capable of holding many balls in the air and that's what Jacqueline does so well. Um, I see it around me all the time. Every woman I know is, is holding many balls. And um, I also think that, you know, women are excellent at de delegating and that we can create a community of people that can support us in a way that men don't know how to do. Women can't even network, you know, to get to the top. They just don't have that ability. They don't have what? They don't have the ability to network with people. Oh. That's what's going to yeah, well, that's ridiculous. Women are way better in social circumstances as a rule than men. And I think that women can absolutely network just as well as any man. Go toe to toe. <laughs> and women only need formal, flexible working arrangements. Um. I think everybody needs flexible working arrangements, men and women. I think that's, you know, that's that's really where when you're working with, you know, bosses and you're working in companies where people can consider the individual, um, you're going to have a much more pleasant, pleasant, fulfilling and probably productive work environment. And women owned businesses are mostly lifestyle businesses, nothing else. <laughs> yeah, well, that's certainly not true. <laughs> yeah, lots of women owned uh, tech businesses and, uh, you know, you know, everything else, <laughs> everything else. And women don't want to work with other women and prefer to be queen bee. <laughs> I think women love working with other women um, that love working with them. I think that it's wonderful to work with women, women working with women and working well with other women. Is really is really fulfilling because there's there's not just the professional side of it, but there's also the emotional side that women so much so value. You know the the bold type has India Connect as well. Uh, you know the the new digital boss. He says Namaste. That's which right. It's slightly annoying uh, for Jane, and then you know he's meditating. He's talking about India. He's talking about you know, the spiritual journey uh, that yeah. he's had. Uh, have you ever had any India Connect? Have you visited India? What was it like, you know, when you, you when he used words like Namaste and the India Connect in the bold type? What's your right. well? I, I I meditate, and I and I um, and my meditation teacher who taught me how to meditate, you know, t takes trips to India all the time. So um, and uh, and I also I love the like I'm a singer, I'm a dancer, I'm an actor, so. The idea of like a Bollywood movie for me would be so much fun. Uh, I would like to just put that out there. <laughs> if anyone needs an American singer dancer to come and do a Bollywood movie, I'm I would like to put my hand up and my hat in the ring. Um, I would so love to do that. I just think they're so much fun. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, India is so beautiful and just all of the connection to nature and um, 
and uh, yeah, I mean, of course, and also, I, you know, you, you have the most beautiful, like raw diamonds. <laughs> I love those gray, raw diamonds, the bangles, oh, like flipping out over those. I need to come to India literally just to shop for bangles. <laughs> you should, you should. What's that BTS moment that you would like to share from the upcoming season of uh... The, the, the bold type. There's a scene where I come in to talk to Jane about something about a transition that I'm making, and um, and I, and when I came in to uh, to the set to do that scene, I actually was uh, prepared for a different scene. I thought we were starting with a different scene, and so I came in and I was like, "Oh, we're doing this scene. Okay, great." You know, so I kind of had to. And we're right now we're, when we're on set, we're wearing all the PPE. We have to have the mask on and we have to have the shield on until we roll camera, and then all of that comes off. So it's very, very hard, as you can imagine, to connect with your other actor um, with all that crap on your face. But uh, but I came into the rehearsal, and, and again, I wasn't thinking about this scene at all. And just reading it, I burst into tears. <laughs> so, so, so that was interesting to try to find the the balance because um, because it was hard. I could have like I literally could have just. The whole scene could have just been me sobbing, but uh, but that's not what the scene was. So, one secret about Cat, Jane, and Sutton that nobody knows. Uh, H loves to wear wardrobe. Will not does not like to wear wardrobe where she has to wear a bra. <laughs> she, she likes to wear wardrobe where she can be braless. Yes, <laughs> and I don't think she might be telling you that. Um, Jane. Let's see, uh, Jane, which is uh, Katie. Katie comes to work every single day in uh, these uh, these wonderful, very colorful tie-dyed sweat sweat outfits that are uh, sweat tops and sweat bottoms that uh, come from a friend of a friend of hers, a company that a friend of hers has in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. <laughs> and Megan is um, she is. Uh, she is in her in her we have because we wear such high heels on the show as soon as we can move into a close-up we put on our crocs where they're like high-heeled crocs <laughs> and, and megan is in her crocs most of the time because she has uh, feet feet issues that like her feet are always hurting so uh, i can relate to that because my feet are always hurting so uh, so that it's it's funny though we're always like as soon as we get those heels off, we get them off. <laughs> I know. And, and you know, your best outfits that you've sported on the show. Which are those five or let's say three best looks on the show? I have loved all of them. But oh, which looks so many you? good ones. Yeah, I mean, one of them was uh, this incredible yellow dress. It just looked like a burst of sunshine. It's, I think it was a Calvin Klein uh, dress that almost had like a side cape to it. It was very bright, sunshiny yellow. I, I just loved that one. Um, in the um, in the first season, uh, I had inc some inc incredible, like crazy weird lace um, kind of Dolce and Gabbana um, blazer that sort of had lace up here and very high shoulder pads and was really quite amazing. Um, and then I've I've worn a I wore an Alexander McQueen uh, blue leather jacket that has a tail to it that comes down in the back and real tight in the waist and zips up the front and is sort of like a motorcycle jacket tailored almost like a like a riding jacket and I thought that was incredible. The finale episode of season five, I have quite an amazing dress that was made for me that's stunning, just absolutely stunning, kind of a, looks like a goddess, it's a goddess dress. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melora, for your time. You know, speaking Aww. to you, getting to know about you, and of course, you know, those interesting secrets that you now uh, <laughs> put out for everybody to hear. Thank you for that. And you know, those, yeah. those little advice, you know, that would mean a lot to millennials and of course, you know, women at work and the way, you know, they're perceived. So thank you so much for your time. And we're really looking forward to your visit to India, which I think should 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 happen. Uh, I'm so too. Once, the, uh, Once the pandemic's over, I'm going to get on a plane and come see you guys. <laughs>